And we are down to our last lesson in factoring. This time, we are going to talk about factoring by grouping. Sometimes if you look at polynomials such as the one on the slide, 3x squared plus 7x minus 6xy minus 14y, there are or there's no greatest common factor of this four, okay? But we can actually group the terms so that we can actually factor out an offer from each term. For example, we can group these first two terms and then group the second uh, two terms so that, okay, let us regroup them. So 3x squared plus 7x. Since this is minus, uh, it, this will change the sign. So this is 6xy plus 14y. Okay, remember this changes sign because of the minus sign here. Okay, and then what is the common what is the common factor of 3x squared plus 7x? Uh, I think that's x, right? And then 3x plus 7. Now, um, this is minus. What is common between 6xy and uh, 14y? I think we have 2y, right? 2y. And then 3x plus 7. If you take a look at these two terms now, 3x plus 7 is common to them. Okay, so we can actually factor out 3x plus 7. Okay, and we are left with x minus 2y. This is x minus 2y. Okay, so this is the complete factored form of the given polynomial. Okay, so let us take a look at this example. 2xy plus 8x plus 3y plus 12. So let us regroup, let us group the first two terms, and then let us group the second two terms. Because, because this is addition, we, didn't, we don't need to change sign, right? So what is common between 2xy and 8x? We can factor out 2x and left with y plus 4. Here, we can factor out 3 and we are left with y plus 4. You see, y plus 4 is common to both of the terms, so we can actually factor out y plus 4, and we are left with 2x and 3. So that's 2x plus 3. That is now the complete factored form of the given polynomial. Okay, another one, uh, like this one, so we can factor this, uh, I mean group this out, 5xz minus 5yz. And since this is minus, this is x minus y, okay? So we can factor out 5z in the first group, 5z, and we are left with x minus y, and this minus x minus y. x minus y is common to both of them, so we can factor out x minus y, and we are left with 5z. This is minus 1, okay? We don't have any coefficient here, but it's understood that the coefficient is 1. So this is now the complete factored form of the given polynomial. Okay, sometimes uh, we need to group three terms such as this one. Okay, so for this example, we are going to group the first three terms and then the second three terms. Okay, with 16, a squared minus 8ab plus b squared and then since this is minus this is c squared minus 6c plus 9 okay for the first one uh, we are going to factor this one as i think this is a perfect square trinomial because this is 4a squared and this is b uh, 4a times b times 2 is 8ab so we can actually say this is 4a since this is minus in the middle term is minus b 4a minus b is squared and then minus the second term this is also a perfect square trinomial because as you can see uh, this is c squared this is 3 squared 3 times c times 2 is negative 6c since this is minus this is c minus uh, C minus 3 squared, right? So that's a perfect square trinomial as well. Now, if you take a look at these two terms, or yeah, 
we have difference of two squares, right? This one is squared, the first term is squared, and then the second expression is also squared. Therefore, we have a difference of two squares. Okay, remember, uh, let us recall that the difference of two squares, x squared minus y squared, is equal to x plus y multiplied by x minus y, right? So x plus y, x minus y, we pattern our answer from there. So we have x meaning the first, that's 4a minus b. We add the second, that's plus c minus 3. And then multiply by 4a minus b, and then minus c minus 3. And since this is minus, uh, we are going to change sign to minus c plus 3. Okay? So that is now the complete factored form of the given polynomial. Okay, and then let us take a look at our final example. a cubed minus b cubed minus a plus b. Okay, so we are going to group a cubed minus b cubed. And we are going to group this. Since this is minus, this becomes a minus b. Okay, so... Now, the, the first one is a difference of two cubes, okay? So, recall the difference of two cube formula, that's a minus b, a squared plus ab plus b squared, okay? And then, that's minus a minus b, okay? Take a look at this one, a minus b is a common factor, so we can factor out a minus b. What is left in the first term is a squared plus ab plus b squared and then what is left on the second expression is negative one that's minus one okay so that's the complete factored form of the given polynomial okay. in the following video in the next video we are going to talk more about uh, the complete factored form of a polynomial just like what we did here okay Okay, for this example, we are going to illustrate that for a given polynomial, the complete factored form may not consist of just two factors. Okay, so let us answer this one, x raised to 6 minus 64. x raised to 6 minus 64 can be written as difference of two, uh, two, two squares, right? So we can actually write this as x raised to 3 squared minus a squared okay so that's difference of two squares so we can actually factor this out as since this is difference of two squares so we can factor this out as x cubed plus a and x cubed minus a but remember a is two cube right so the first one is actually a sum of two cubes and the second one is actually a difference of two cubes right so let us factor the first one this is x cubed plus two cube the sum of two cubes is x plus two right and then x squared minus two x plus four right and for the second one recall the formula for the difference of two cubes that's x minus two since this is two cube as well and then the square of the first plus two x plus four this is now the complete factored form of the given polynomial and then finally let us take a look at this example we have x raised to six minus 16 x cubed plus 64 okay so this one can be written as a trend this is actually trinomial right uh, we can actually rewrite this as a quadratic trinomial by of course making this the exponent is uh, 2 so this is x cubed squared minus 16 x cubed plus 64 if you take a look at this one this is of uh, this is a quadratic factor right this is a quadratic factor if you take a look at this one the first term is x cubed the last term is 64 and the middle term is negative 16 okay so x cubed squared is a perfect square 64 is a perfect square as well that's 8 squared 
right? So if we multiply 8 times x cubed times 2, that's negative 16 x cubed, which is equal to the middle term. Meaning, this one is a perfect square trinomial. Okay? The perfect square trinomial is x cubed minus 8, minus because the middle term is minus, is squared. Okay? I hope you get that this is a perfect square trinomial. Okay? And then, we know that uh, below, the x cubed minus 8 is a difference of 2 cubes. So, we can actually factor that out further as x minus 2, it's 2 because 8 is 2 cubed, and then x squared plus 2x plus 4, and then everything squared. So, if we uh, distribute the exponent, this becomes x minus 2 squared multiplied by x squared plus 2x plus 4 squared. Okay? So, that is now the uh, complete factored form of the given polynomial.